everybody, it's Jimmy. Uh, I'm glad to be back to the shop after a few weeks on the road. Uh, had a great visit with my family. Uh, just one little funny thing about that trip and then I'll get down to business. When I got back to Florida, I looked at the trip odometer, which I never remember to do by the way. I always zero the thing out and then I take my trip and then I never do look at what the actual mileage was. But I parked in the exact same spot that I had pushed the zero button on the trip odometer. And when I got back, the reading was 3,333.3. Five threes. I thought that was pretty cool. So anyway, that's all I wanted to say about that. We'll go ahead and get down to business. Um, billiard balls is a thing that I always like to buy when I'm at yard sales and so forth. And uh, I've got quite a few of them around the shop. Um, I've used them over the years for various purposes. Uh, I replaced the cheapy little plastic knobs on a couple of my drill presses. And I've also made stick shift knobs out of them. So I've made a few of these little trinket boxes and uh, the first couple uh, I just kind of had to murder my way through it. I didn't really have a technique down. Uh, didn't go incredibly well and I finally uh, sat down and designed a, a couple of jigs that have uh, helped me with the process. So I'm just going to show you what my process is uh, for making these things. I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, the basic design is that uh, you just kind of cut the ball in half. Now this one I machined into kind of a cylindrical shape here and uh, you know the top is drilled and the bottom is drilled and there's a piece of 1024 uh, screw in there. It's all thread that I use to attach the wooden base and also the finial. So I'll kind of show you how I do that uh, with these. And uh, this is uh, another one that I made. It's, it's pretty similar. And I kind of improved the technique, but, but the process of getting these things hollowed out uh, was, was interesting to figure out. And the first couple of them that I made, I didn't really have a technique. I, I finally decided to uh, design a jig uh, to help me with these. And this is what I arrived at. Uh, this is what the ball looks like in cross section. And uh, you can see that, uh, you know, obviously it's spherical here. And uh, this is a cut line for the top, where the top comes off. And then once the top is off, um, I use Forstner bits to make this uh, cylindrical cavity in here for the box. And then there's a little rim that I put on here so that I have a register point uh, for the lid. Uh, the, uh, I ended up making a chuck for this, and uh, this is what it looks like here. Uh, the chuck, uh, it's uh, mounted on a face plate here. And uh, the ball is uh, first attached into the chuck using a piece of 1024 screw that comes up through the, the bottom. And uh, I don't know if you can see it, but it's down in there. That's the screw head there. And it comes up <clears throat> and it grabs a hole that's in the bottom of the ball here. So this, this has another piece of all thread, but you would screw this in. And then this flange here uh, is cut so that it'll hold the ball in place. It'll put some downward pressure on the ball and it'll keep it uh, hopefully from spinning. So it's got to be pretty tight, I've found. Uh, when you're coring these things out with the Forstner bits, there's a fair amount of friction. And uh, if it gets to be too high, you can actually spin the ball in the fixture, which is not, uh, not a good thing. I've actually done that a few times and it, it results in some uh, extra cleanup you have to do on the outside of the ball. So let's go ahead and make a trinket box out of this five ball. To attach the ball to the chuck, I need a hole that is at the top or bottom of the ball that goes through the center. So I made this little jig here which I align to the center of the spindle of the drill press. It's just a uh, Forstner bit hole and there's a quarter inch hole at the bottom of that and I use this transfer punch here to align the, uh, the jig to the center of the spindle. So the ball is aligned to the center of the spindle and uh, so I'm just going to kind of eyeball how I put it in the jig there to identify where the top is more or less and so I'll use this little centering bit to establish a divot for the drill bit to bite into. This is probably a good time to note that the phenolic has a nasty little dust that comes off of it. So it's really important to have uh, you know, some sort of respirator when you're doing this. You do not want this stuff in your lungs. I drilled my hole for a 1024 tap. 
Well, I don't know how I did this, but this thing is as crooked as it can be, and I just took it over to the lathe, and the run out is ridiculous. So somehow the ball or the drill or something slipped in the jig, and I ended up with this thing off center. So I'm going to repeat the exercise, but I'm going to do it with this two instead. All right, so we've tapped this, and I've got my 1024 inserted in there, and just eyeballing it, it looks pretty darn good. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but that other one was off. It must have been 5 or 10 degrees or so. All right, I've got my uh, two ball uh, held in place uh, in the base of my, uh, my chuck here and by that 1024 screw that comes through the center of the base plate. So I've got this little flange here, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and screw that on here and I'm going to drill a hole uh, into the top and that'll give me a nice aligned hole on the top and the bottom that should be pretty much 180 degrees out from each other. And I'm going to part uh, this top section off of the ball. You see there's a fair amount of heat checking in here on on both sides of this. So next step, we'll go ahead and hollow this thing out. Got my Forstner bit staged here. This will be the final size. And what I've learned about this is you don't want to get in a big hurry. You don't want to try to get it all out in one go. There'll be a lot of heat that builds up. So I'll be stopping about halfway through each one of the, uh, the drills here and I'll quench the bit so that I don't uh, overheat the piece. gets hot very quickly. All right, we're bottomed out on that one. To finish the inside of this, uh, wet sanding works pretty good. So I've got a piece of 180 here, and I'm just going to take the tool marks out with this. Oh yeah, it's looking real nice. The flange off. pretty good it's uh, pretty much like the drawing here it's got the little step I, I, I made it a little deep but it doesn't seem to be a problem here I think I could actually even go a little deeper if I wanted to when you cut the top of the ball off there's the kerf that you have to uh, consider here so this top here uh, if, if you set it down you know it, it kind of disrupts the geometry of the sphere here so to address that uh, what I've done with these others here is uh, I've just uh, uh, I CA glued a piece of uh, wood to the bottom of the top if you will and then I just uh, turned that on the lathe uh, to uh, conform to the bottom and to provide the register for the bottom so uh, I've got a little piece of maple. I like to have my colors contrast a little bit, so I've selected a small piece of maple here. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and glue this up with CA. Uh, I turned this down. I left this a, a little bit concave so that I could put my CA gel in here nice and liberally. And then I'll just stick it to the top of this. And then I'll put this in the lathe. And I'll cut so that it fits the bottom. Here I'll cut the register and then I'll just put the two pieces together and uh, shape it. Okay, I'm just contouring uh, my little spacer here. All right, we've been back and forth uh, getting this thing fitted up and I've got a nice registered fit now. So the ball, there's the, there's the uh, sphere. And now I can push my live center up into the base of this and then uh, we'll go ahead and smooth this thing out and uh, recover the, uh, the nice spherical shape here. It's off just a little bit. And I'm just getting the top and the bottom uh, to uh, work together. Let's use a conventional tool and uh, sandpaper. And I got this thing pretty concentric here around the uh, center axis here. So that way uh, it'll be uh, real nice and uh, concentric when it gets on the base. And so now what I'm going to do is uh, to finish this, I'll just wet sand here. Uh, this, I believe, is about a 180 grit here. And uh, this phenolic, it wet sands very, very nicely, very readily. Now we know what happened to Pluto. Yeah, <laughs> right. Okay, uh, we've gone through the grits here uh, with the wet sanding, and it's in pretty good shape. Um, and uh, we're at a point now where uh, I'm going to have to let it sit for the night here. Uh, the uh, when I got the wood wet here, it'll it swole up a little bit and it'll make the grain stand out. So 
I'll let this dry through the night and then I'll sand it again in the morning and then I'll be ready to put my wax finish on it. Okay, that's good. I just use good old paste wax on this and uh, that seems to hide a lot of little nicks and defects pretty well. Alright, so for the finial, I've got a piece of what I think is coca bola here and uh, what I did is um, I used a, uh, a rounded burr to kind of create a little divot in the end of this thing and then I drilled it out and tapped it for a piece of 1024 all thread and then this little piece of all thread uh, will then go into the top of the lid. So I'm going to go ahead and chuck this up in the Jacobs chuck and I'm going to turn a little finial. Parts are done. Uh, turned this uh, maple base off camera and the only thing I would point out about it is that I cupped out the top of this so that uh, when I apply it uh, to the bottom part of the ring box or the trinket box it has kind of a line contact, a nice contact with the bottom. So there you go. Uh, the top turned out pretty nice. Has a good fit with the bottom and uh, you can see I've got the cupped out uh, detail on the finial there and when I turn that down uh, it too will have a line contact with the sphere so it's a nice tight fit and I think that uh, looks pretty decent so there it is the job is done we'll put it over here with the collection it'll have a place of honor until I figure out who gets these and uh, only have about 30 more billiard balls to do so I think I've got the process down pretty well. I look forward to making some of these. I sure hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and a comment. And if you're not a subscriber, I sure hope you'll consider becoming a subscriber. Have a great day.